All right, we're going to talk about the shoulder muscles, and there are a lot of them, so I am dividing this lecture into two separate sections. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the shoulder muscles um, in functional groups. And then we'll have a separate section where we talk about um, what the book likes to call functional considerations. So the first group that we're going to talk about is the scapulothoracic joint elevators. So these things elevate the scapula. Upper trapezius, levator scapula, and rhomboids. Um, good scapulothoracic posture is um, considered to be slightly retracted in elevated position. It results in the glenoid fossa facing slightly upward. <clears throat> and in the functional considerations chapter or section, we will talk about um, why this is good, <laughs> why this is important for good shoulder alignment. So the trapezius um, is a large, uh, the largest, most superficial muscle on the upper part of our posterior torso. It's diamond shaped and it's functionally divided into three parts. And you can look at the fiber directions and you can see the, the three different fiber directions. Three different lines of pull, therefore different muscle actions. And that's the differentiation between the upper, middle, and lower trapezius is their, um, the fiber directions. So um, the upper trapezius sort of has a, um, it goes kind of a little bit medial to lateral and superior inferior. The uh, middle trapezius goes mostly medial to lateral. And then the lower trapezius um, goes inferiorly um, and a little bit medial to lateral. So they all have a line of pull. They all help with re um, scapular retraction. But then the upper trapezius can do elevation and lower trapezius can do depression and they both function in um, force couples for upward and downward rotation. So the upper trapezius, um, its primary action is scapular elevation. And then um, as using scapular elevation in that force couple for upward rotation. And we'll talk about how that works um, just in a few minutes. But its origin is the external occipital protuberance on the back of the cranium. Um, and the ligamentum nuchae, which is um, ligaments on the posterior side of the cervical spine. Um, so it has a superior origin. Its inferior insertion is the lateral third of the clavicle and the acromion process. So um, when the insertion moves towards the origin, you get scapular elevation. Um, it's innervated by the spinal root of cranial nerve number 11, which is unusual. The entire trapezius is uh, innervated that way. Um, the rest of the upper extremity muscles are um, elevated by, uh, are uh, innervated by nerves coming off of the cervical spine and going into the brachial plexus. So the upper trapezius is unique in that. Um, it also has a reversal of muscle function um, with the scapula and the clavicle fixed. So now the proximal end is relatively fixed. The, um, and the origin will move towards the insertion. So the um, external occipital protuberance moves towards the, the chromium process, which is lateral flexion of the neck. Um, if one, um, it also does contralateral rotation of the cervical spine. So when we're talking about the neck and trunk muscles, we will talk about um, uh, contralateral and uh, ipsilateral rotation. Um, so don't worry about it too much right now. We will definitely get more into that. But um, just know that the upper trapezius has its normal action, which is um, scapular elevation and upward rotation, and its reversal action, which is lateral flexion of the head and neck and contralateral rotation. The levator scapula, it's deep to the trapezius in the sternocleidomastoid. Um, it's a scapular elevator, and it functions in the force couple for downward rotation. Again, we'll talk about how that works because it sort of has a similar line of pull to the upper trapezius, right? So how does one of them do upward rotation and one of them do downward? Well, we'll talk about it. It's the other guys on the team that help. Um, so the um, origin is the transverse processes of C1 through C4, the cervical vertebrae, and the insertion is the medial border of the scapula between the superior angle and the root. So that's why the um, superior angle of the scapula is a good bony landmark for finding the levator scapula. And the levator scapula is 
often a muscle that's aggravated because we're looking down at our phones and uh, books and computers and stuff and we are um, aggravating it and causing it trouble so that it turns around and aggravates us and causes us trouble. So a lot of times we're working on the levator scapula. Um, it also has a reversal of muscle function. Um, when the scapula is relatively fixed, the origin moves towards the insertion and we get side bending and rotation of the neck to the same side. And we'll talk about this more in the neck and spine chapter, chapter 8. So um, it's innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. That makes sense. It's the dorsal side of the scapular, dorsal scapular nerve. The um, innervation for the upper extremity muscles is um, uh, not as organized as the lower extremity muscles, so it takes a little more memorization. The rhomboid um, major and minor, they have that um, broad origin and broad insertion, so they're a rhomboidal muscle. Um, the origin is the ligamentum nuce, the bottom of the ligamentum nuce, and the spinous processes of C7 through T5. Um, the insertion is the vertebral or medial border of the scapula between the inferior angle and the root. So it's a rhomboidal muscle. So you can see how it has a line of pull for, for um, scapular elevation. The fibers go um, slightly uh, superior to inferior. Um, and its main motion is um, scapular retraction. It also functions in the force couple for downward rotation, which we'll talk about in a minute. So um, it is part of the scapular elevators group, though, because it does have that line of pull. And it gets the dorsal scapular nerve. So we had to, we elevated the scapula, now we have to depress the scapula. So scapular depression is performed by the lower trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, strangely enough. We'll talk about that. Um, pectoralis minor and the subclavius. Um, these muscles work together to depress the shoulder girdle and the humerus. That's where the latissimus dorsi comes in, resulting in shoulder depression. So the lower trapezius, um, it also assists the middle trapezius with retraction, just like the upper does, because it has those horizontal fibers. Its origin is the spinous processes of T6 to T12, broad origin. Its insertion is the root of the scapular spine on the medial side of the scapula, so it has a really tiny insertion, so it's a triangular muscle. It does um, scapular depression, because it has those fibers that pull inferiorly to pull the scapula down, and then it also um, functions in the force couple for upward rotation. Um, it's like all the heads of the trapezius, it um, gets the spinal accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. So the latissimus dorsi, um, it's our most superficial um, posterior lower trunk muscle. Um, it has a reversal of function for crutch ambulation, which we'll talk about in the functional considerations section. Um, big, broad origin and tiny little insertion. So it's a triangular muscle. It's just a big one. So the origin is the spinous processes of T7 through L5, the thoracolumbar fascia, which is all on the lower thoracic and lumbar spine and the posterior surface of the iliac crest and the lower four ribs. So, wow, that thing inserts everywhere. <laughs> and its, inser its uh, insertion is the floor of the bicipital groove. So it goes from the posterior side of the trunk to the anterior side of the humerus. Um, so that explains some of its other actions. But um, So we look at its main actions, extension, adduction, medial rotation, and hyperextension of the humerus. How in the heck does it depress the scapula? So the way it depresses the scapula is, it, see that downward line of pull that it has? It pulls the humerus down, and because the humerus is attached to the scapula, um, it depresses. So the latissimus dorsi does not act in isolation to depress the scapula, but it acts with the other scapular depressors to participate in the action. Pec minor, um, I call it the eor of muscles because it is a downer. It does scapular depression and downward rotation. Everything's down, just like Eeyore. I love Eeyore, though, but um, pectoralis major, it's the Eeyore of muscles. Its origin is the anterior surface of the third through fifth ribs. Its insertion is the coracoid process of the scapula. So when insertion moves towards origin, 
it depresses the scapula. Okay, um, it's deep to the pec major and it gets the medial and lateral pectoral nerve. So um, it also functions in downward rotation of the scapula and we will talk about that. It has a reversal of muscle function. When the scapula is fixed, it can help lift the ribs for inspiration, for forced inspiration. So in chapter 13, when we talk about um, breathing and ventilation, that's the pec minor is going to come into that. So any muscle that attaches to the ribs can have a secondary function um, in uh, breathing. The subclavius, even though it doesn't attach to the scapula, it attaches to the clavicle. It depresses the clavicle, thereby depressing the scapula because the two are attached. Makes sense, right? So it's a little muscle, origin near the cartilage of the first rib, insertion on the inferior surface of the clavicle, it pulls the clavicle down. It depresses it. Um, the upper trunk of the brachial plexus is what innervates it. So the upward rotators of the scapula, um, some of the ones that we've talked about, we haven't talked about the straightest anterior yet, but we're going to talk about it next. So the upper trapezius elevates the scapula, the lower trapezius depresses the scapula, and the serratus anterior protracts the scapula. So the combination of those three vectors is a resultant vector of rotation. So the upper trapezius pulling up and the lower trapezius pulling down and the serratus anterior pulling anteriorly, you get the upward rotation of the scapula. The glenoid fossa turns upward the inferior angle moves anteriorly. So even though the muscles have very different lines of pull, they all rotate the scapula in the same direction. Um, the, so it's, the picture is like it's like a steering wheel. One hand's pulling down and the other is pulling up, but you have three hands, the upper trapezius, the lower trapezius, and the serratus anterior. And so you can see with those arrows the line of pull. So for downward rotation, um, it's the um, levator scapula pulling upward, the rhomboids um, retracting, and the pec minor depressing the scapula. So it's the same motion in the opposite direction. Okay, we'll review that again. Serratus anterior, um, it does that scapular protraction. It's the main and only scapular protractor. Its origin is the lateral external surface of the first eight ribs, and its insertion is the anterior surface of the vertebral or medial border of the scapula. So it, um, when, it re when it contracts, it pulls that scapula anteriorly. It protracts it. Um, we just talked about how it functions in upper rotation, and it also holds the scapula onto the um, rib cage preventing scapular winging. And in the functional considerations um, section, I have a good picture of scapular winging from the book. It gets the long thoracic nerve. And the way I remember this is SALT, S-A-L-T, serratus anterior long thoracic. So the last three little fingers, little digitations on the ribs interdigitate with the external obliques. And they make that, um, that nice little uh, ridgy part on the side of your trunk on people that have really good muscle definition. So, you know, I guess that's not really functional, but it's kind of neat. So the serratus anterior is the only scapular protractor. Um, it generates force that moves the scapula away from the body's midline. The force is produced um, by the serratus anterior. It's transferred through the scapula to the humerus and it's used for forward reaching and pushing activities. So we talked about how the shoulder joints all work together. So here's a muscle that doesn't have an attachment to the humerus, but it assists with reaching forward with the humerus. Okay, the downward rotators of the scapula um, are rhomboids, pec minor, and levator scapula. So we talked about it when we talked about the upper rotators. The um, levator scapula and the rhomboids have different lines of pull, but they produce scapular motion in the same rotary direction. So the levator scapula is an elevator. The rhomboids are um, retractors and slight elevators, and the pec minor is a depressor. So that causes that downward rotation. 